Dr. Nurse Podcast community. Welcome back to the show, Nina Hart. I'm so happy to have you on today and talk about your business. You are the owner of Hart Healthcare Solutions, which helps post-acute care companies take back operational health of their organization, improve efficiency, stop the vicious cycle of critical staffing, enhance survey outcomes, and ultimately improve patient care, and kind of how you've launched another branch of your business, which is helping nurses create their own businesses, which is pretty cool consulting businesses. So guys, she's back on the podcast to share her latest endeavor, which I'm so excited about. We were talking about prior to getting on. First off, welcome, you know, so glad to have you. And yes, I cannot wait to, to dive into what you've been doing in this new kind of pursuit. So much. I'm really glad to be here. Tell me a little bit about kind of what you're doing, what this new role is, what your new business is kind of taking on. So this kind of new branch is Heart Healthcare Consultants. Over the last year, as I was working my own consulting business, I started having a lot of interest, a lot of Facebook messages from nurses, a lot of comments on my posts about what I'm doing. Like, I want to do that too. I've always been interested in that. How can I start? And so from a personal level, it's really hard to respond to all those in a way that's actually helpful to nurses. There's limited help I can actually offer. If you message me and say, how do I start a consulting business? I can't walk you through that via messenger. It's impossible. So I felt like I'm kind of letting them down, not really being that helpful. So I started putting together a course of pieces of what I was doing and the things that my coaches had taught me that was really helpful. And then the things that kind of left out that weren't so helpful or I didn't really connect or align with because a mm. lot of the people I'm connecting with are a lot like me. So I'm like, this is confusing or I don't understand or I could not implement this part. So I took kind of the best parts and started putting it together into a course. And then I realized like a lot of people just can't do a course. I, I can't often just do a course. So it morphed into this coaching program, this 12 week coaching program of impact and income as your own boss. And it's a consulting training program for nurses who want to launch a consulting business and don't know where to start or how to figure out what they would do, which seems to be the main problems that I was getting asked about. So for my listener, that's like, okay, wait, what is she talking about? I didn't listen to that episode, her first episode. Walk me through that journey, that last part of that journey that we talked about. Again, guys, I'll link the episode in the show notes so you can take a look and listen to her career journey. But you had this traumatic situation, moving to Hawaii, super expensive place to live. You with sole breadwinner and you get fired from your job. And yeah, you would, you know, sold everything back on the mainland and you're living in Hawaii and the bottom falls out. And so I kind of caught you as you were starting your consulting business, which you told me how much money you made. It absolutely blew my mind how much money you made from your consulting business over the last three years since we've talked. And that's what made people go, how the heck are you doing this? How are you making so much money? teach me how to get started. So kind of walk me through. Yeah, I was really stunned by that whole entire unfolding situation, to be honest. So exactly what you said, you hit every note. We moved to Hawaii to take my dream job after I had totally mm -hmm. fried myself trying to define my own success in my job for the last 12 to 15 years in healthcare leadership. Everything I did was about being recognized by my employer, working harder than everybody else to get ahead, to be noticed, to be promoted, and it worked. My job was my success. I was always successful at work. I had never had problems at work. Then I take this dream job. You just give away everything to make it work, right? Get there, overcommit myself and get fired five weeks in without a good reason. I mean, I just said it wasn't a good fit and they were right. There are a lot of takeaways now reflecting. It still feels like yesterday. I'll be honest. It feels like that happened yesterday. That was the most devastating thing that ever happened to me. I know that sounds silly that being fired was the most devastating thing that ever happened to me. But when your job is everything you have, it was crushing. So through that situation, I had been applying for jobs as I got fired and a physician called me and said, Hey, you applied for a regional quality director position and it's filled. And I was like, Oh, well, thanks for letting me know. Right. And he's like, yeah. I saw in your resume that you worked for this other competitor for five weeks. What happened there? And I said, well, they fired me. You know, he already told me the job is filled, right? I got nothing to lose here. Really, they fired me. And he's like, really? 
And I said, yeah, it didn't work out. And he's like, yeah, me too. Actually, that's why I started my company. I was in that role that you were in and they fired me as well. And I was like, wow. And he's like, yeah, I started my own hospice. Yeah. He's like, I'm now the CEO of my own hospice here. And I saw on your resume below being fired that you've done a lot of accreditation and compliance stuff over your career. It's like, yeah, I led a very large hospice ACHC survey in Tennessee for a single provider and really had a great team and great results. And he's like, what would you think about doing some consulting and just helping me do that? And I was like, wow, I've always wanted to do consulting. I would love to do that. Right. And I also have zero income and a $5,000 <laughs> for my Super free right now. Yeah. Really, my schedule is clear. So he's like, what did you make as CEO? If you don't mind me asking, I was like, well, it kind of pans out to about 125 an hour. It's the most I've ever made in my life. And he's like, well, I'll do 150. I'll do 150 an hour. And I'm like, okay, sold, right? Like it didn't start out for me as this very clearly defined, I am now a consultant and here are my rates and here are my packages. Here's what I have to offer. And I think sometimes as nurses in our task brain mind, we want it to be very cut and dry and professional and clear. And it's not like that all the time. Sometimes it's just seeing where something goes. So Figuring it out as you go. Figuring it out along the way. I didn't have a program for accreditation when he called me. I had nothing. I had no job. I had no income. I had nothing. Wow. So I started working with him. I worked with him for the rest of the year. I worked an average of 15 to 25 hours a week the rest of the year and, and matched my CEO salary from that. I also started developing out some stuff I had made as a director of nursing in the past put it in a little folder and shared it in a Facebook group on the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. And I was like, hey, I put these forms together. I made as a director of nursing to help with survey. And they're in a little, in a download folder. It's 27 bucks. I hope it helps you out. Posted it in a couple DON Facebook groups. And on Monday, when I woke up, there was $2,700 in there in PayPal from that folder. So a hundred directors of nursing in those Facebook groups bought that download folder for $27. That's now $200. That's 15 years of my experience I put in those forms. Imagine how okay. many hours that saves them. Okay, wait a second. So, okay, <laughs> hold up. That's crazy. So you took your expertise from all your years of being directors of nursing and you created a document. So what was valuable yeah. in there that people were like, ah, got to get it. So as a director of nursing, I had to do a lot of audits and there's a lot of things that need done step by step that are hard to keep track of. So it's hard to know as a new director of nursing, what I'm supposed to be looking at. I don't even know what to look at. I don't know the regs as a new DON to know what I should be checking. And there's not always mm. resources for leaders in healthcare. There's a lot of pressure to be the one who knows everything. But oftentimes uh -huh. you're not the one who knows everything, right? You're just yes. the one who took the spot, who took the keys, right? So yeah. um, I put forms that I had created from different survey audits and regulatory checklists. That's all it is. Think about if you opened up Microsoft Word right now and literally made a bullet point sheet of everything you knew about one very small topic, like all the mistakes you could make or things you could overlook when you're doing this one thing. I just put 20 of those in a folder and sold it. Oh, it did $30,000 in 2021. I'm sorry? They did $30,000 in 2021 from May to December. Girl, you're such a bee. So I started putting myself out there in ways that I had been too afraid to. But I had been putting my knowledge of survey and regulatory into a course platform since 2020. So for over a year and never shared it with anyone. I don't even think I told my husband about it for months. Once you get past this threshold of fear and really put yourself out there with a very clear message, hey, this is what this is. This is what it's for. This is the price. This is the problem it solves. Here it is. If you want it, great. If you don't, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not trying to push it on you. Because it's just helpful information, right? Let's talk about the role of a D DON because somebody's like, okay, wait, I don't even know what a DON is. What was she doing? I don't understand what that job title is. So describe what a DON is, again, for someone that didn't listen to the original podcast that you did break all this down and then talk kind of something that you mentioned as well, or we'll just talk about kind of what a nurse consultant is. That's a really great, great question because it is a question that I get more than any other question is what is a nurse consultant? What do they actually do? I don't get it. 
So a DON, a director of nursing, is in almost any setting that you can think of. There's a clinical manager. Sometimes they're also called a clinical manager, depending on the structure of the organization. Usually the DON is above the clinical manager. They are the end-all, be-all of all clinical activities in the facility. So in long-term care, where I came from, the DON has all of nursing underneath them and often even oversight over housekeeping and dietary and just depends on the structure. I mean, they are the end all be all. If a nurse doesn't show up, it's my phone that's ringing. I am responsible for every clinical thing that happens. I'm responsible for survey, for outcomes, for falls, for wounds, for discharges, for therapy outcomes, for reimbursement, for capturing documentation, all of it. So there's a lot that goes into that role that new leaders who haven't done this just feel very overwhelmed walking into this role that feels impossible sometimes. I think what you're describing just really quick is, and for those that are listening, you go from managing maybe your department and managing just your little thing, you get comfortable and then you get promoted to this next level of leadership that you feel unprepared for, right? And so what you provided was that bridge for, let me help get you quicker to the point where you're like, okay, wait, I know what I need to manage now and I know how to manage it and what I need to keep my eyes on and how to do that work. Thinking of my experience coming into that role, it took me well over a year to feel like I understood my role. As a charge nurse, you maybe you're lucky to get six weeks of training, really lucky, right? Mm-hmm. To get six weeks of training. And then maybe after a couple months, three months, you're like, I'm an expert. I know my schedule. I know my expectations. I know the policy on this. It took me... I would say a year and a half to start feeling like I knew what I was doing as a director. Wow. So in the long-term care model, there are these consultants that float around. They have a a region of buildings. And that was my ultimate goal at the time was to become a consultant, have this freedom to not be in one building all day, to be a resource for all the buildings. I thought that was what a consultant is. And a lot of nurses think that too. A consultant is an internal employee who provides support or sources to a region. And that is true. Kind of like a float nurse. Exactly. That is one that or like a leader in a float role, like a regional. Yes. Okay. Like your regional. So while that is true, that is a consultant. There's a lot of conflict of interest there. You're still an employee. You can't choose your hours. You can't choose your pay. You can't choose your travel. And you really have a conflict of interest if you want to bring something up that could put your job in jeopardy. You're not going to bring it up. Or I'm not. Ooh, give me an example of that. Well, if I failed to audit correctly my one building and they come in and find all these mistakes and it was my job to do that audit and I failed to do it accurately or I found something and I'm like, should I bring this up? If, if I bring this up, the director in that building gets fired and I have to go sit in that building and it's two hours from my house and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to try and work it out so I don't have to go cover that building. That's a mm-hmm. conflict of interest. Whereas an external consultant who is a nurse expert in one area who partners with organizations to provide specific guidance on a solution to a problem that they have that's costing them money or staff. If I'm external, I'm going to be like, hey, this is going on right here. I found this right here. Here's what you need to do to fix it. I don't care what your employee dynamics are. I'm not involved in it. It doesn't affect me or my job if I call out the issues you're having. So I think sometimes nurses who look at consulting opportunities as employees don't realize you're still an employee of that company. You don't have control over all those things I mentioned. Yeah. And you're also still bound by your employment to them. And I'm even thinking if you have to report to a DON, then if they're like, hey, listen, this is a problem. And they're like, no, it's not. It's not a problem. And you just need to deal. So all of a sudden, like, even if you are bringing Next up something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to hear it because it's like, right. I have to deal with it. I don't want to deal with that. Or it's going to take so much effort and time to reverse this problem. So just ignore it. It's not that big of a deal. So then now when it all falls apart, you're standing there and they're like, well, who brought you're it up? So I did. Yeah. I did bring it up. So now yeah. you're on the chopping block. Right. So it's just better to keep your mouth shut. If you know that the person you're working for isn't going to really make any changes. You really right? can't be objective as a consultant. Yeah when you're an employee. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I want, that was my ultimate career goal at one time. So I'm not dogging anyone in a consulting role. It's an amazing opportunity to impact and to really be an expert in an area. And I'm just suggesting that you can also do that independently without being an employee and have a lot more control. Now, as Mm -hmm. a consultant for an organization, they're going to say, I want you to go 
to Lexington, Kentucky, and you need to stay there Monday through Friday, eight to five until that validity is stabilized. And you're like, well, I live in Akron, Ohio, and I have kids and I don't want to stay in Lexington, Kentucky, eight to five Monday through Friday, right? I don't want to have to do that. And working for yourself, you make those decisions. I can be available to you Monday afternoon, all day Tuesday and half of Wednesday, and then I need to head on home. Okay, thanks. And you set your own hours, your own rates, and your own travel availability. And really, that's something for me that is super important to have the clarity of control over my work-life balance now. I go to the, I don't even schedule myself for work on Friday. My kids get off at noon. So sometimes on Friday while my kids are at school, I'll go to the beach and then they get home at noon and then I spend the rest of the afternoon with them because I can't try to pressure myself into working more hours. And the beautiful thing about consulting is you don't need to work more hours. Now I try not to schedule tracks around hourly. I don't even guarantee hours anymore. It's going to be $20,000 to get this one reason period. If that takes me four hours, because I'm an expert and I've done this for 15 years, then it takes me four hours. Great. If it takes me 40 hours to get that result, then it takes me 40 hours, but you still get that result. So yeah. wow. there's a, a lot more. Yeah. But sometimes that can be scary to nurses to have that unchecked. You know, it, it's a lot of, you have to define that for yourself. You have to take control of that and, and make those choices. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to know your worth making them for you. Cause you sound like someone who knows their worth, you know, what your schedule is going to be. You've got your priorities straight and you're not deviating from these are my non-negotiables. So it either works or it doesn't. But I didn't, I was a corporate <laughs> nurse. I, I literally almost lost my marriage over not having clear boundaries between work and home. I would work until mm -hmm. 11 o'clock at night. Cause I thought that would give me recognition. So after I got fired, and someone didn't recognize my work, I realized, holy cow, I am super burnt out. I got fired because probably a, a lot of it was my fault and I just didn't realize it, how fried I was and how engaged I really was. And yeah. it finally started, and it's been almost two years now since that happened. I got fired on January 6th of 2021. So in three months, November, December, January, it'll be two years. And I am just peeling the layers of this onion of burnout that I think is a very easy term to throw around, but this is deep seated stuff over 15 years of me being a high performer and trying to show my worth and not having boundaries, not giving my family any of the priority they deserve, not giving my marriage the priority it deserved because I was so worried about looking successful at work. So for a nurse that's sitting there and she's like, hearing your story, it's hitting her in her heart. She's like, I'm there. I am in that same position. I'm burned out. I'm tired. How can someone get started with nurse consulting? Say they aren't in long-term care. They're in something yeah. else. What are you able to kind of see that nurses are able to move into in this nurse consulting role? There are consulting specialties for every single area in healthcare. There are finance, there's business management, sales, strategy, infection control, wound care, acute care, shared governance, magnet status, IT, privacy, technology, data analytics, education. I could literally go on and on. I actually have a list of 40 specialties that a nurse should consider. There's legal nurse consulting, which is really hot right now. That's not something I do. The thought of being deposed makes me want to hide in a hole in the ground. But <laughs> a lot of nurses are interested in forensic nursing, legal nurse consulting. There is limitless areas that consultants are currently needed and used. And if you Googled something you were interested in and you already found a nurse consulting company for that, instead of saying, it's taken, say, Yes, there's a market for this because somebody else is doing it successfully. Yes, that is a really good mindset. And again, switching mindset is something that you and I were talking about repeatedly. I think this is sometimes hard for nurses to break free from of this employee mindset. There's a lot of security in an employer, having somebody there yes. that's going to take care of you and offer you benefits. And we've got your back until they fire you. And you're standing there like I got exactly. fired as well. Like I'm losing my job. Yes. Yeah, so sorry. We don't have funding for you next year. Good luck. And now you're like, oh, mom, this isn't my mommy and my daddy. They are taking care of me. I am on my own. And so that mindset 
the shift is something that can be given to you because you've been fired and you're like, oh, okay. Or it's something that you can begin to cultivate. So kind of, can you describe to me what an employee mindset is versus kind of this breaking, how to break free from that mentality and go, I know my worth. I'm going to start kind of exercising this muscle of nurse consulting for myself. Just an example. Over 10 years ago, I I was researching opening a CNA school. I've always wanted to work for myself in some way. I've always been interested in business. I went to the Chamber of Commerce. I talked about getting business grants. I talked about funding. I made a business plan on opening my CNA school. I even toured locations. And you know what happened? I started asking, what if? What if no one enrolls? What if I spend all this money and get a loan on equipment and and a lease and I can't pay it? What if I can't pay myself? What if I don't make exactly the amount that I need to make every two weeks? I realized I wouldn't be getting a paycheck. There wouldn't be guaranteed money anymore. And I quit. I let it go. I never looked at it again. I dropped it right there because I was the breadwinner and I knew the what ifs might come true. I might not make enough money. So for 10 years, I worried that I wouldn't make enough money to replace my director of nursing salary, which my first director of nursing salary was $25 an hour. Okay. So my daughter is teen and makes almost that working in the kitchen at the resort by our house. Okay. So (laughs) I'm serious. I'm dead serious. So I thought, gosh, I won't make enough money to replace my $25 an hour and we'll go under. What will happen? We'll die. We'll we'll shrivel up. We'll be homeless, right? So all that time, I would not let go of that guaranteed paycheck. 10 years, right? So I'm forced. That is pride from my hands. I'm fired. I'm forced to let it go. I'm forced to let go of my CEO salary of $250,000 a year. And I'm like, I will never be able to replace this with another job. Every job I looked at was $100,000, right? Which would have been great in any other setting. But for what I had just committed to for the next 12 months and moved my entire family across the ocean, it wasn't enough. It wouldn't even pay our rent. I mean, so- So why is it so expensive, right? Right, is right. nuts, right? Yeah. So the moral of this whole story is, had I let go of my guaranteed paycheck 10 years ago, I could have been charging- $250 an hour, like I did last year, you know? So it's like these, <laughs> these, these things that we hold on to for security, that employer supporting us, that quote unquote guaranteed paycheck. Yeah. I got guaranteed a paycheck for five whole weeks and then they guaranteed me nothing. They gave me nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like this guarantee that we think we got a paycheck. I think the pandemic in some ways really opened a lot of eyes with this. Even the travel nurses getting their pay changed right? Like, oh, sorry, the rest of your contract is at $1,000 a week because we don't have the $5,000 a week we guaranteed you. Oh, we don't have any more hours for you because there is no hazard pay or whatever the situation is like, it's at their convenience. And as a person who has a business, I realize that now too, I have to do what I have to do. So if I don't have hours, I don't have hours, right? So it's like when you are an employee, you are completely subject to whatever makes that business thrive. So one thing I realized looking back, and I had a coach who challenged me to do this. She said, what would you have been paid if you were a consultant for a company that you did something amazing for? Well, for me, I had $660,000 in six months of time and agency labor that I eliminated from a hospital where I was the director of nursing, right? Guess how much of that $660,000 I got for doing that? Guess how much they gave me for doing that? Zero dollars and zero cents. Guess how much of that I would have gotten as a consultant? Let's be generous. We'll say over six months, I charged 10%, right? Which is is high. I probably wouldn't charge 10% of an outcome, depending on how big the problem was. That would have been $66,000 for six months for one contract. And I didn't even do anything extra above and beyond what I knew how to do as a director. Just my experience from knowing like, hey, this is the positions we have open. Here's what I need to do. We got to get creative. We need to limit our overtime. What's causing it? Drilling down into the problem. So any problem you're solving for your organization, you could be solving as a consultant and actually getting the money for solving it instead of doing the work of an employee because organizations know 
employees cannot fix problems for the organization. Wait, and, say and that again. So if you're an employee and you go to work and you're doing your working, you're not fixing problems. They know hiring another director of nursing isn't going to fix the problem with turnover for directors of nursing. Hmm. So if there's a company and they're like, we've had 10 directors of nursing this year, none of them have been able to reduce our wounds. None of them have been able to fix our surveys. None of them have been able to reduce our turnover. An outside person can come in and do that because they are not your employee. They do not do the day-to-day. -day. They do not have a full workload on their plate. I right? just got that. Yes, no. it's true because you're seeing patients, you're doing whatever, you're taking care of people. You don't have time to fix no. the problems because you just nope. want to survive them and go home. <laughs> and what happens if you don't do your task and see your patients? You get in trouble. So you're yeah. not going to take time away from what you know you're held accountable for. Most people to go above and beyond and add multiple extra hours for nothing right? Some of us have this natural thing that we can naturally do as part of our jobs. Like I was talking about with reducing agency and overtime, because I had done that before, right? It was a natural part of what I do, but I didn't have to do that. No other DON before had done that. They told me they hadn't been free of agency in 10 years before I was there. Because they just said, well, get old can, staff, right? I can remember at least 10 years that we've had full-time travelers. She said it could be longer than that. So they had people covering full-time roles from the mainland because Hawaii is really challenged in labor. And so you have to be really, really intentional to find local staff that's good and make sure they're trained well enough because a lot of them are new grads or from other countries. And if you don't really give them the extra training they need and help them get their licensure, they can't work here. So yeah, so simply implementing a program where we added an extra four weeks of training got us three on-island RNs from the Philippines who were amazing nurses, but they were afraid they wouldn't get enough training. They were afraid they'd make a mistake. They were afraid they couldn't get their license. They didn't have contacts to reach out to. And a normal hiring manager is going to be like, nope, see ya, right? So we had to stop the process and make extra time for them to say, hey, you can do this and we're going to support you. And here's how, here's how we're going to support you. And we'll check in every three months and make sure you still feel comfortable and we'll give you extra orientation shifts above and beyond to make sure you understand and we'll help you submit your license with a reference letter. So that was something that a normal employee did not take the time to do in the past, right? So those are programs that I could take. I could implement that program for another organization right now. Oh, are you a remote rural healthcare system relying completely on agency? As a staffing consultant, I can help you eliminate agency and I'm and get all local staff on board. How does that sound? We, we estimate it'll save you about $500,000 every six months at least Turn based over. on our past. Yeah. Based on wow. our past clients. That, that is consulting. You scale this business slowly, right? So I remember you telling me earlier as well for someone that's like, okay, but I don't have any experience. So how do I go in and say, oh, I can be a nurse consultant. Let me show you what I can do when I haven't done anything. So how do I do that? But I remember you telling me when we were talking before the podcast that you started off slow and, or lower than what you were currently charging now, which you're charging right. an astronomical amount, but you had yeah. to say, hey, listen, this amount I'm charging now is because I want to show you that I can do it. And you've kind of had to start at a lower rate. And then once you're able to get some momentum, you quickly scale up your value and your worth through what right. you charge, right? Yes. So a little piece onto that before I address that is subcontracting is a great way to start. So now I subcontract with several other consulting companies who you can make a connection with on then and say, hey, I'm interested in what you do. I'd like to learn more. That's it. Subcontracting start a, for nurses. Start a conversation. So subcontracts pay 75 to maybe 150 an hour, okay, in the lower range because it's not your contract. You're, you're on a team of consultants working on a very large contract, and they need help, right? Yeah. They can't manage it without other consultants, other experts on the team. So sometimes I'll be on a team of 10 or 20 consultants all working on one big implementation, one big contract. So they say, you've got 40 hours, however you spend it, you work for yourself. Here's what your piece of the contract is. Here's what your audits or your, one of the subcontracts I did, I literally just called and got auths. The hospice was switching over their insurance providers and got a new provider number. And we just had 
2,000 patients to get insurance ox on. They said, you've got 60 hours. It's $100 an hour. Just call the insurance company. I sat on hold for about $500, okay? So it's like they just needed somebody to help get the ox, and it's 2,000 patients, right? The employees can't do that. No employee yeah. can can spend their whole day getting offs on all the new patients so they don't lose their revenue. They would have lost revenue mm -hmm. for all those patients. So there are projects out there that you can help with without owning the contract or going to get it for yourself. And that's a great way to start. But also my first contract, he told me what he was going to pay. He said, I'll pay you 150 an hour to help me get accredited. I didn't say 350 it is, right? Like I charge 350 and that's my bottom line because yes. I was not an established consultant. I was exploring an opportunity and I was open to it. Now I know I can do it. I know what the outcome is. I know what the result is and I know how I'm going to do it. So I can go into that conversation much more confidently, but it wasn't always like that. It's yeah. something to see what you enjoy and what you want to do and what you have a strategy to do and what solution you can offer and then kind of morph it into something that's a package, that's a service that you can confidently say, I can help you with accreditation, six months, $350 an hour or $25,000, whatever you feel more comfortable with, right? So <laughs> it's, awesome. it's an evolution of yes. figuring out how you can very clearly message what your solution is. That's it. That's yeah. the thing. You have to know, you can't be like, hey, I'm a consultant and I will help you with anything you have for me to do. Yeah. That's an important. You have, a niche. you have to have a niche. You have to know what you provide to a company, right? Yeah. And a lot of times just looking back over what you've already done is enough for a lot of people to see when I show up, people always say X, Y, Z or I always get complimented on ABC or when my priority, when I walk into a new place, the first thing I'm going to do is bam, maybe that's your specialty. That is so good, man. So many nuggets you're dropping. What is the hardest part of owning your own business, launching this whole thing, just branching off your heart of healthcare solutions? What has been the hardest part of owning your own business and kind of stepping out into this new role has been? I think kind of what you've alluded to already, part of it is self-discipline. It's really tough because I'm the boss of me and, you know, this guy runs a real loose ship like, type of thing, you know, <laughs> right? I don't wake up in the morning. I don't schedule calls early in the morning at all. First call is not before nine because I will not make it on the call. Okay. Yeah. So figuring out like what I need to be able to be productive and also creating boundaries with more hours does not equal more success or more money. And that's a trick. That's an employee trick. If you want to pick up an extra shift, we're going to give you a hundred dollar bonus pay and we're going to give you $50 an hour. And you're like, Ooh, I need that money. I'm going to pick up that shift. It does not work like that in business. Truly less is more. The more you extend yourself and overextend yourself, the less you bring to the table. So it's for true. me, that's been a mindset shift where I will find myself working and working. My kids get off at two Monday through Thursday. And really, I know in my brain, after two, I'm not going to get anything done. I can't have any calls. They're going to come in. They're going to want my attention. They're going to want a snack. They're going to be bouncing off the walls and doing handstands. So it's like yep. my focus, four snacks, okay? <laughs> I was going to say. All the snacks. <laughs> so my the focus snacks. is not going to be on my work, and I'm not going to be productive. So right now, I work only while my kids are at school. So I work from eight to two, Monday through Thursday, and I work from eight to noon, sometimes on Friday, depending on what's I'm going on. Out. Last Friday, I didn't work at all. So yesterday, yesterday was last Friday, but yeah, so I did not work. So it really looks like does working until seven, does sitting and staring on, at my laptop with 42 tabs open really look like productivity and really bring in income? I've had to really focus my mindset on what is an income generating activity for me? What is a, a time suck? for me, right? I even had a content calendar one time that had a green post-it note and anything you were going to do that brought in money was a green post-it note. This is going to bring in money. And if you've got a red post-it note, that's like social media covering up a green post-it note, you better take that red one off for that day. No more. So it's really focusing on what is actually moving my business forward and what is actually bringing me down. Where's my energy at with what I'm doing? That's been really hard for me because I have been in this employee mindset, this corporate leadership mindset for 15 years where more is more. And right now, more is just heavier. 
for me. Oh, okay. that is so good. That's the part I'm going to have to quote that part because it's more is heavier. I yeah, totally I think, um, align with that. One of my coaches said only a fool weighs value in pounds. And so yeah. it's more is not more. More is just heavier to carry sometimes. So yeah. I've really been trying to scale back on what I expect of myself. I expect too much. So I've really had to do a lot of personal reflection, reflection. on where yeah. I find value and where I'm just performing because wow. I feel guilted into it because I feel like I have to. I should be doing this. I try not to should on myself anymore. That's really smart. And I don't want to shit on you either. You shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing that. I know what I should be doing. So oh I've had to have a lot of compassion for myself in that way. Oh my gosh. This journey has been so cool. It's like <laughs> that, I mean, honestly, that's the hardest part of owning your own business is don't shit on yourself. Like yeah. I just, yeah. again, more is not more like right. finding the things that, you know, are going to actually bring value. And, you know, it's so funny because I just got offered another collab. Hey, Sandra, let's add on something. And I went and I, again, my natural reaction was just, yes. You know, and I was like, stop, yeah. stop it. And I, you, I you just want to point out, <laughs> yes, exactly. you are pregnant. you've got a say lot. No. And so I had to say, say no, I had to yeah. say no. That was good for you. And so no, that was hard. Back. Yeah. Yeah. But what you just said just reverberates with my soul of like, she's right. Like that work is so hard to just go, no, if it doesn't move the needle on my business, I don't need to do that. But what's really what important to recognize is that I did not come to these conclusions alone. These were not things that I just realized one day. I have paid for coaching as I'm like, okay, I need to invest in this business being a real business. There is no plan B for me. This is it. This is what I'm doing. I've had to invest in that. I have skin in the game. These coaches that I have paid to help me develop my business are the ones who are telling me, you seem like you're hustling for this really hard. And is that the kind of business you're trying to have where you hustle for the rest of your life like you have for the last 15 years? Like challenge, account, right, call me out. I had one of them say something. They see it on your face, like even Zoom and call you out and say, you seem like you're really overwhelmed right now and really in a negative place. Like just bam. Okay, I am. Yeah. So I wasn't coming to all these golden nuggets alone. Sometimes we cannot do that internally. I was not in a place where I knew enough about business to do that for myself. And I was also in a place of deep recovery where I had been hurt and crushed and could not even see the possibility. I did not see the possibility of being fired, turning into having my own business, which I had dreamed of for 15 years. Wow. So That's sometimes so we need to realize that we need help. And I know a lot of the times nurses and, and just people in general are like, well, I'm not paying for that. Well, then don't expect to get to where that person is because they have paid for that. They have invested in that. Those things are the things that have given me the ideas for the things I'm talking about. So yeah. sometimes we can't generate that alone without help from the outside. Man, no, that is true. so poignant. That is so poignant and beautifully said. And again, I think nurses need to hear that the best money you can spend is not in stuff. It's not in sometimes even investing in other things. It can like, other oh, I bought a real estate property or I bought this or that. Like sometimes that's not it. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just invest in yourself. yourself. Yeah. Building up your skills or building yeah. up your mindset or changing your mindset around something because maybe that other stuff comes down the road because you've changed the way you look at things. And yeah, yeah, I think that is so well said. Uh, and again, for a nurse that's like, all right, I'm sold. I want to know what she's doing. I want to get involved. She needs to help me. She's blowing my mind right now. I want her to coach me. I want her to teach me how to do something for myself. Starting small, subcontract work, whatever. Where can they find you? How can your business help nurses? Because that's one of the things that I like having coaches on, but I really want them to explain specifically how they can help the nurse that is listening to this podcast, a nurse practitioner that's like, or the DON that's like, I, I want to get involved in consulting. Like I'm sick of this. Everything I'm doing, I'm doing from my own personal experience. So I don't speak about things that I don't know about. So anything that I'm sharing with any nurse and as much as I can provide that for free without over committing myself, I want to do that to help nurses. I want nurses to see these endless possibilities that are literally all they have to do is let go. So I had this control issue. So I have a, a Facebook group for 
nurse, nurses that want to be self-employed, nurse entrepreneurs, income and impact is your own boss. And I think it's self-employed nurses, income and impact is your own boss on Facebook. I started the Nurses Making Waves podcast, which is an experiment for me. And thank you for all of your help and support with that. You're amazing. You are definitely some of the inspiration behind that. So I have on there nurses who talk about their own business, how they got started, what their challenges are. And then I have the impact and income coaching program that is essentially, if you're like, I'm very serious about starting a business, I need a strategy. I need a proven process that is going to work if I implement it. And that's a 12 week program. So there's recorded content that you can access forever. But again, I also realize that that doesn't work for everyone. So we do have weekly calls where we talk about how to get through those areas where we get stuck. And it helps me too. And we hear each other's stories where we're stuck, what we need to do, give each other inspiration and encouragement. So that's really been amazing. I also have the 40 consulting specialty areas. It's just literally a list. It's a Word document of over 40 different areas that you could consult in as a nurse. And that is in that Facebook group that you can go and find in the free resources section. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's one of those things that when you when you see that things are being offered to you and you don't take advantage of them, you can't be mad if things don't change for you. I get people on my DMs or they'll send me messages like, I don't know where to start and I don't know if I can, you know, that seems easy for you to say. And I'm like, it's not easy for me to say. Actually, it's super hard for me to say. You don't realize yes. what we've gone through, you and I and different Amen. nurse pet nurses to get to this point where we're like, no, no, we need to break free from this. How do we get yeah. free? And it's only through the hard crucibles of fire that we go through that we become these phoenix rising. And I just want yes. more nurses to see yeah. you don't have to have that employee mindset that you can set yourself free and you don't have to go deuces and quit your job and do this radical thing, but right. you can slowly build, you can slowly yes. grow and you can slowly yes. pull yourself from that super glue magnetism that employers have over nurses. And, and just so, start making connections. Yeah. If you can't quit your job, just start making connections with people you want to work with or companies you'd like. You know, just start making connections with the right kind of people. Connect with me, connect with you. Those are the kind of things that are really important. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. My light just went out and that's not gonna, that's fine. It'll come up on the YouTube video, but you can still see me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> My super shiny light just went out. But anyway, yes, that is well said. And I agree, just start your network is your net worth. So the more people yes. you're exposed to, the more things that you see, that. the more exposure that you have, you're just like, okay, well then I don't have to keep this singular view. There's so many more things that I've been exposed to. The podcast has done that. You have these conversations yeah. with nurses yeah. on your podcast. And so you're like, whoa, I didn't even know there was some other nurse that went through the same thing that came to the different result or whatever. It's just really beautiful yeah. how we all do that. So again, thank you for your time today. Thanks for coming on the podcast and sharing everything with me. I feel like we should do another rapid fire because I did a rapid fire with you before. So let's do like a rapid fire to close it out. I'm the worst at these. All right, go ahead. <laughs> if you could pick a character to play you on a TV show, who would it be? I already know who I think you should have play you. Really? But okay. I just like, I but I just want to like see like what you say. Play me on a TV show. Who's the one that's in the note with uh, with Ryan Goslin? I like her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel, no. Rachel McAdams, Emma Stone. Yes. Yeah, one no, no, no. McAdams. Yes. Okay. Yes. Who, no, who, totally. So, okay. I know I, I'm just going to say this, but you totally look like Ashley Graham. Have you seen her really? before? Yeah. I think you look like her. She's beautiful. Hey, I'll take that. Yeah. She's I like can. a supermodel, right? Like yeah, she's so beautiful. And every time okay. I look at you, I'm like, she looks like Ashley Graham. Like you totally look like her. So, Thank you. Let me tell you that. And if you had to give someone a book you read, which would it be? Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Oh, that's a solid choice. Thinking for a change, John Maxwell. Oh, you yeah, got two. John Maxwell's good. He's solid too. And oh, just for, I think I know this. I think I know this answer. No, I don't think I know this answer. I know a lot about your life, but I don't know about this. What was your first job? Your very first job. Subway baby, sandwich maker. Subway. 505 an hour. <laughs> what is their slogan? Your way? I don't Eat know. Fresh. Hey, by the way, that should have been a sign. <laughs> oh, guys, check her out. I'll link all her stuff in the show notes. Again, thank you so much for your time and your energy and just your outpouring of love for nurses. It just is inspiring. It's lifted my wings. You give me wind thank beneath you. my wings. Thank so, you. I love it. Thank you so much. Amazing. All right, guys, enjoy the journey of your careers.